So it's a mere coincidence that uh, this class or differential amplifier is taken in this particular way. Coincidence, right? Why? Typically, our class is being held in the atmosphere section. Therefore, if you compare, the audio quality of the atmosphere is much better. Right? As compared to this one, because there are so many fans that there, there is no AC, no air, air conditioner is present. And because of the fans, primarily, because of the fans, you understand that although the intensity of my voice being the same, because of the presence of that noise, whenever I just upload that video in YouTube, you will see that the quality of the video, quality of the audio as well, is not that clear because of the presence of so many disturbances, right? Now, this may happen every time. Whenever some signal is being generated, whenever I am saying something, I am talking something, so basically I am generating some signal, some audio signal I am generating, right? And sometimes you are required to transmit that information, that audio signal over communication channel, for example. So what happens if everything is fine, if there is no such disturbance, you can expect that the signal that I have generated, the same signal will be transmitted without much disturbance, without much distortion. But whenever during the course of the signal generation, what I find some external noise, primarily because of the presence of this fan in this particular room, the quality of the signal gets deteriorated. Hopefully you know some of the parameters based on which uh, the quality of the signal is measured. One of the important parameters is the signal to noise ratio. The signal uh, power of the noise power, that ratio. And we always expect that the signal should be accelerated. If you compare the quality of the audio that is being produced at that particular similar room, control similar room, where the audio current is much better as compared to this. Why? Because of the presence of those. But sometimes, suppose uh, my requirement is that I have to generate but I have to recreate the original signal. That means I have to just get rid of those noise measures. And what is the way? Of it? The thing is that in the environment, the genetic the signal, keeping the signal power same, you don't have any uh, control over the noise, but you have to devise something based on which, even if the noise is present, then the signal quality is not distorted. That is the basic mode to this case. So what I find, suppose there is a signal source, something like that. There is a signal source, we generate some signal. So for the sake of simplicity, I have just shown some sinusoidal signal, maybe any signal in nature. And suppose this signal is also facing some uh, external noise, something like that. That means apart from the signal, some external noise is also captured when the signal is being generated. So as a matter of fact, now if I assume that the, the way that the noise is corrupting the signal is, is an any kind of thing. That means the signal is, if, if the signal is represented by S and the noise is represented by N, then the signal that I am getting ultimately is S Then ultimately, the signal that you are getting over here is something like that. It's not a pure sinusoidal signal, there are so many disturbances. The peaks and if we just consider the graphs, it's not exactly the sinusoidal one. It's a distorted one. Right. Now my idea, my understanding is that I have to get that particular sinusoidal signal at my output. Even if the external noise is present something, then what is the way of it? Is the problem clear? Is the problem clear? As of now, in, the, in our discussion of uh, single stage amplifier, mass stage and multi stage amplifier, what we have assumed that there is no such noise. Only signal is present, some hand shadow signal is present, for example, and our idea is to magnify that signal using some amplifier circuits. And according we have studied so many amplifier circuits. Common end amplifier, common gain amplifier, common current amplifier, then the amplifier, transport amplifier, so many things. Multistage amplifier. But suppose the signal is being produced <coughs> in a particular environment where the noise is also. What should be done? From the design perspective, from the circuit design perspective, what has to be done? So what is done is, basically suppose this is a signal source or transducer which generates a, a signal something like that. 
Now what I am doing, instead of generating only one signal, another copy of the signal is generated with some characteristics. What is the characteristics? This signal, if you just compare this signal and this signal, can you find out any similarity or difference between these two signals? This one and this one, these two signals. There is a phase difference one thing. So if this signal is at its positive peak, this signal is at its negative peak. That is one thing. And another thing that you have not noticed over there is that both of these two signals they are lighting up in DC level. Right. It's not clear, it's not apparent from this diagram, but uh, the thing is that these two signals must write on a fixed DC level. Right? And they are excursion over and above the DC level is equal and opposite. So, for example, if one signal is something like that, suppose this is my DC level, this is a constant DC level, and suppose uh, one signal is something like that, this is one signal, and the other signal must look like this. That means both of these two signals, they are lighting on fixed DC and they are, they are having equal and opposite extension. When this signal goes positive over here, this signal goes negative and when this signal goes negative, this signal must go positive. Equal and opposite, that means this difference and this difference, they must be same. So, if this difference is, say for example, let me call, if this is V dash, then this should be also V dash, right? Now, what advantage we are getting out of that? Now, remember, both of these two signals, this, this first one and second one, so if I call it, this is my signal number one, and uh, this is my signal number two. So, both of these two signals, they are generated in the same environment. So with the assumption that the noise, the external noise, that is that is being present, so uh, the noise is affecting both of these two signals similarly. So the way the first signal is corrupted, the same way the second signal is also corrupted. So if I call the first signal, suppose I am writing the first signal as, so signal number one, or the overall signal I can write like, uh, let it be x of t, so this x of t is equal to some s1 of t plus nt. nt is the noise component, right? And the, okay, this is x1 of t. And the second signal, x2 of t, is equal to s2 of t plus nt. So what is s1 t, the first signal? And what is S2T the second signal? Remember, both of these two signals, S1T and S2T, they are perfect sinusoidal. A perfect signal, the desired signal. But the, the corrupted signal, X1T, could have been something like that. I can have X1T something like this. Suppose this is my X1T, for example. This is my X1T. It's constant. Right? And suppose X2T is something like that. It is also corrupted. It's following the shape, but it's corrupted like that. Okay? So now, what is S1T, the first signal, the original signal, is put in the second original signal. And that signal, which has been shown by this green, which are nothing but the corrupted signal, noise corrupted signal. Now, if you just, and assuming that both of these two signals are affected by the same noise, the same environment. Right. Now, if you, tell, if you take the difference between these two signals, X1T and X2T, what happens? Assuming that the, uh, the noise that is, affected, uh, that is affecting both of these two signals, similarly, then the difference between these two signals, x1t minus h2t, is a different version. You can simply get rid of the effect of the noise. So what you have is one t minus h2t. Plus h2t minus h1t. Yes, h2t minus h1t. 2 into h1t. So what happens? So the effect of the noise is eliminated and you have some magnified version. Even without doing any kind of amplification, you can have some magnified version. For example, if I consider the first signal, the original signal, what was the, so the peak, peak was from V dash, right? So what was the peak, what is the peak V dash? What is the peak tuning variation? 2 V dash. Similarly, for the second signal, the peak tuning variation is 2 V dash. Now, if you consider the different signal, x1 t minus x2 t, that signal is having a variation from 2 V dash to minus 2 V dash. So here the calculus is 4 V dash. Right. 
So that is the basic notion of the, the, now, now suppose you have these two signals x1 and x2 t, and now to magnify, now if I amplify these two signals separately, x1 will be amplified by some and amplified by the gain of say a, x2 t will also be amplified by another another amplifier or one same amplifier with the gain say uh, a. Now, if I consider the difference between these two signals, now if the, if the output is something like that, it's not like x1 t alone or x2 t alone, rather it is a x1 t minus of a x2 t then you can simply get rid of the noise signal. So, we are in the process of designing some amplifier, we are in the process of designing some amplifier which can get rid of the noise. That means even if the noise is present, the noise will not be amplified. Only the actual signal, the desired signal will be amplified. Okay, and these kind of signals are known as the differential signals and the amplifier by virtue of which you can magnify this kind of signals is known as the Differential amplifier. So what I find that the individual signals are distorted. Individual x1 is distorted, x2 is distorted. Right. Sim similarly, the amplified version of x1 t will also be a version of the original signal. The amplified version of x2 t is the distorted version of the original signal. But if you not take the difference between the two amplified versions, then the difference doesn't contain typically doesn't contain any noise. Or even if it contains some noise, the effect of noise can be eliminated to a significant extent, can be reduced to a significant extent. So here the idea is, we have to amplify the difference. We need to amplify the difference. We are not amplifying the actual signal, rather we are amplifying the difference between the two signals. Clear? Any doubt up to this? Okay, so first of all, we have to identify what is meant by differential signal. So a differential signal is a kind of signal uh, which must uh, possess, or it's a kind of a pair of signals, pair of signals which must possess these two properties. First, first property is that they exhibit equal and opposite excursion around the DC level, and each of them must ride on a fixed DC level. That means, if I consider the DC level, the average level of each of, of this pair is constant. If I consider a pair of signals, uh, I, I can call a pair of signals differential signal if the average value of them is fixed. That means they must write on a fixed DC level. For example, if I consider this one, so this is the average level which has been identified by this blue line. This is the average level, right? And I am having one signal which is which is represented by this uh, green variation, something like that, and the other signal which is represented by this red, represented by this. Now tell me whether I can call this pair green and red, this pair, can I call it a, a differential pair? They are riding on a fixed DC level, they are riding on a fixed DC level, but, but they, are, they are not exhibiting equal and opposite excursion. It's, a, it's an opposite excursion but not equal excursion. When this is a positive peak, this is a negative peak, but these two peaks are different. Here you have V1, here you have V2, and V1 and V2, they are not fixed apparently. So they are riding on fixed DC, they are exhibiting opposite excursion but not equal excursion. They are not a differential signal. So this pair of signal is not a differential signal, non-differential signal. Now come to this one. This signal is riding on a DC level, this is the fluctuation, this is riding on another DC level, this is the fluctuation. Then you have equal and opposite fluctuation, something like this. But the DC levels are different. This is V in CM1, this is called V in CM1 and what is meant by CM? And this is this is V in CM2. These two values are different. Apparently, V in CM2 is less as compared to V in CM1. So obviously, this pair is also not a differential signal. Now come to this signal. Now this signal, the third one, what I find, they are riding on a fixed DC level, right? And they have equal and opposite excursion. So now I call out of these three signals. This three pair of signals, I can only consider, I can only say that my last signal is the differential signal. Right. So therefore, for a differential signal, you have a pair of signals. Differential signal is not a single signal. It's a pair of signals. And I have to magnify, I have to amplify each of them separately. Typically, by means of same kind of amplifiers. So for example, if uh, for a first signal, suppose for the, the signal has been represented by this green, if the gain is equal to 10, 
then the second signal which is represented by this ray, the gain has to be equal to 10. The gain must be same and typically they are amplified using a same sign wave. That means uh, these two amplifiers, they are nothing but the replica of one another. Right. So therefore, if I have two signals, so I must have two amplifiers. A set of amplifiers I can call it. Set of signal is amplified by a set of amplifiers. And what is my output signal? Previous we have just observed. Now, typically, we have to consider what we have there. They have discussed about the uh, common amplifier, common current amplifier, common phase amplifier. We have seen that this output is taken either from the emitter side or from the collector side, and output is taken with respect to the reference point, which is known as the ground voltage. Isn't it? The collector to ground voltage, or emitter to ground voltage. For common amplifier, the output is taken from the collector, for common phase amplifier, the output was taken from the collectors and for the common collector amplifier, the output was taken from the emitter. In each and every case, we have observed that the output signal is nothing but the collector output voltage with respect to the ground or emitter output voltage with respect to the ground. Now, this time, whenever we, we refer to this differential amplifier, so then the output is not taken with respect to ground. Rather, the output of the common differential amplifier is nothing but the difference between the two, two amplifier outputs. I have already told you that differential pair is nothing, um, differential signal is nothing but a pair of signal. It's a pair of signal, and each and every one of them is amplified by a set of amplifiers, by a single amplifier. So, signal 1 is amplified by amplifier 1, signal 2 is amplified by a replica of amplifier 1. So, I can call it amplifier 2. Replica. So, each and every, uh, this, uh, I mean, each of these two amplifiers, they provide uh, one output. What is the overall output of the differential pair or differential amplifier? It's nothing but the difference between the two amplifiers. If I take the output from the collector 1 or collector, so then the output, overall output is nothing but the collector 1 output minus collector 2 output, not vice versa, collector 2 output minus collector 1 output. Clear? So let's consider. Let's consider this particular amplifier. Forget about the right hand side. Just, just, just consider this, this part. Just consider this part. Are you familiar with this? Are you familiar with this kind of amplifier? <coughs> this is my input. This is now. Are you aware of this? Consider common amplifier amplifier. Simplest biasing error. Now, if I assume that this input signal itself is having some DC level, it is guiding up some DC level. So, in that case, I don't require any additional biasing error. Right? Because I know that my input signal is having some DC level. Right? It's a common amplifier amplifier. Now, this amplifier, so if, if this is, uh, if I call it like, uh, this is Q1, I can similarly have a replica of that on the right hand side. This is the left hand side, input is applied from the left hand side, and I can also have a replica of that, that amplifier on the right hand side. And these two resistance, RC, they must be same. If not same, you will see that there will be some problem. I will come to that. Okay, so ultimately the differential amplifier looks something like that. This is the pair. What do we have? I have, since uh, I am uh, discussing about the differential amplifier, so I must be having a pair of transistor. A pair of transistor. Q1 and Q2. With the assumption that both of these two transistors, they exhibit similar characteristics. That means their beta value, the corresponding cutting voltage, and every parameters being the same. Q1 and Q2, same model, everything being remaining the same. And the two collector resistors, RC and RC, they are also same. If I have, say, 1 kilo ohm resistor on that side, it should be 1 kilo ohm resistor on that side. Right? Apart 
from that what I have an additional, can you identify this one? This I W. What is that? This one? Not your department. This I W. What is that? Any idea? What is that element? What is that element? This one? Huh? Current source. A constant current source. Constant current source with a value equal to I E. Why E? Because this is connected to the emitter side. And since it's a part of a dimension amplifier, so uh, as I've only told you, since it's a dimension amplifier, so uh, a pair of things. Whenever it is differential, that is a pair. Right, so not a single lead, rather double E, I, E. Okay, sounds good. Why? Why it is needed? Why it is needed? Now, whenever this I, this particular current source is connected over here, so the bias point remains the same. Bias point is no longer sensitive to the value of the corresponding input level, input DC level. What is that CF for? That thing is nothing but a common mode. Common mode. Common mode. That CM stands for common mode signal. So as I have already mentioned, the differential pair is nothing but, uh, I mean, something like this. This one and then you have Then you have this signal, one, and this signal, right? So both of them are writing on a DC level, and that DC level is known as the common mode level. I can call it V in CM, input common mode level. And then over and above this DC level, this pair of signals, they are exhibiting equal and opposite expression. If this expression equal to V1, if this x is equal to v1, or rather v dash, this is also v dash, right? But that can be v double dash. There is no problem. This can be v double dash. Now, if it is v double dash, then it has to be v double dash. Try to understand. If this is sinusoidal sort of signal, then obviously both of these two half, they must be having the same thing. But that might not be the case. Whenever one signal is having some excursion like this, this blue one with a positive value plus V dash, then this black one must be minus V dash. Equal and opposite. When this black one is having a value equal to plus V double dash, then the blue one is having a minus V double dash. So if it is a V dash value, if that variation is V dash, that has to be V dash. If this is V double dash, this has to be V double dash. Equal and opposite variation. Opposite variation, equal variation. And writing on a fixed DC level. And that DC level is known as the common mode value. Common mode. Right. Now, if this particular uh, current source was not present in the circuit, then what happens? The base drive, now suppose let's assume that this particular point P is connected directly to the ground. There is no current source. So what happens? Now, depending upon the input power mode level, input DC level, the corresponding base drive will be different. And accordingly, the current flowing through uh, both of these two circuits, both of these two uh, transistors will be different. It will be very much dependent upon the input power mode level. In order to restrict that, what I am doing, I am adding some uh, current source in, the, in this particular path so that uh, the, the DC current which is flowing in these two halves, they are ultimately governed by this particular current source, current source value. And since it is connected, now, it, now, now typically the circuit starts from this particular point. This is the head of the circuit. Typically for any circuit, the circuit we, we draw the circuit from, from the supply line. Then we have the se several uh, circuit elements like resistors, capacitors, inductors, some, uh, then you have some transistors over there. And ultimately, the circuits end over there. Right, this is the ground line. So if I call this is my head, I mean this is the head of the circuit. So ultimately, this this uh, corresponds to the tail of the circuit, right? So typically, uh, that particular current source is also called a tail current source. Tail current source, right? Don't get confused with the name. Anyway, now, so as I already told you that uh, for the differential signal, it's a pair of signal. 
if i directly connect i mean if this point is uh, connected to the ground directly then depending upon the input dc level now suppose input dc level is 2 volt if input is 2 volt then obviously you have some amount of current two minus points when that will be the base drive now suppose your input common level is at say 3 volt it will be different so the current which is present so sometimes it is possible that one of the transistor might drive uh, might be driven into the saturation it depends entirely upon the value of the input common one level because you don't have any control over the input so uh, hopefully in the next semester we'll study one subject called signals and systems something like that now let's start from process signal transmission and signal transmission so that means uh, it's a part of your uh, signal part of the system but so that means what whenever we, we design a system so the design of the system should be independent of, of, of the quality of the signal so my idea is to design an amplifier and that and that and that design of the amplifier should be irrespective of the present of the signal the status of the signal can vary but your amplifier should be able to amplify that particular signal it's not that if, if i if i have the dc level riding on a particular uh, i mean the signal is riding on a particular dc level uh, the, the amplifier is operating properly and uh, if, if the signal is uh, is riding on another dc level that amplifier might uh, might be driven into the saturation or might be driven to the cutoff then that is not the idea of this hopefully you can remember the effect of the capacitor I mean, the coupling capacitor is on uh, single stage amplifier why those capacitors are present can you remember the, the effect of the capacitors yes Restricting the distribution. Now the capacitor and the coupling capacitor are together. So whenever you connect, whenever you connect any signal source to the amplifier at the input side, they have a coupling capacitor. Also, you know that uh, if I have a capacitor over there, it, it, it must uh, severely affect the, uh, the happiness response of the circuit. But still, we, we prefer to have a capacitor, a coupling capacitor. Why? Because whenever you connect a coupling capacitor, then the amount of DC signal that is there inside this particular response, I mean, the uh, your input signal doesn't carry any significance. Whether it is acting on 2 volt DC or 1 volt DC, 0.5 volt DC, minus 3 volt DC, doesn't matter. Because whenever it's acting capacitor, this capacitor will block the input. The only interesting part or only important part is the small signal addition. And the DC part is taken care of by the biasing The biasing has already done. And that is under your control. You have designed the circuit. So whenever you design some circuit, the amplifier circuit, it is meant for a wide range of things. It's meant for amplifying wide range of things. It's not that it is in your only amplifies this kind of thing. And that will uh, ultimately uh, imply the robustness of any system design. Robust. That means the system is much more robust. Like, like uh, for example, a good student, how can, how can I classify a good student? For example, or good singer or good player. How can you classify a good player, a good cricketer? You know that Virat Kohli is the is the one of the best in this particular area. Why? So Sachin Tendulkar was the best during 95. But what was the reason? How how to classify? Performance in various parts. Performance in this cricket. Performance in one cricket. Performance in T20. Performance in foreign country or performance inside the country. Safety wise, you see that the quality of the particular player or quality of the singer or quality of any person, any profession. Right? So that depends. So obviously, if I if I call, okay, Namita Bachchan is a very star actor, for example. He's not going to be a star actor. Why? He's performing well for years of years. Right? That's why he is great. Why is Ramon Isra was great? Because she can sing it in different languages. And the quality of that, that particular voice it is marvelous. There are so many good singers for a, for a, for a narrow period of time. Say one year, two year, five year, and after that they will sound this. Still, the country relies on those persons. Why? In different persons, different fields. Why? Because their greatness, their performance, that is not for a particular period of time, for a longer time. Right? 
Similarly, when it comes to system design, so whenever you design a system, it's not that, it's not that this system is capable of performing well under a given circumstances. When we were students at that point of time, in 90s, one of the former uh, uh, test captain, Mohamed Ajay, he typically at that point of time, the India never lose any match, any test match in India. The part of the real test. The spinning track in India, and whenever the foreign countries like Australia, South Africa, or New Zealand, or England, they used to play here because the spinning track, the performance of India was fantastic. But when it comes to the world, when it comes to England, when it comes to Australia, when it comes to New Zealand or South Africa, then the same team, same cricket team, their performance is horrible. So you can't regard that that cricket team as a great one. Not the greatest. Because the performance is limited within a particular particular paradigm. So there are these paradigms. If the paradigm shifts from one to another, if it is from the batting track to say swimming track, then the performance of the trust. Similarly, when it comes to system design, so you have to design a system in such a way so that it can amplify a state of signals, a wide range of signals, and that gives the robustness of that particular system. So if I, if I don't have this, this particular current source I of over there, then the performance of this particular amplifier is heavily dependent upon the amount of skill level input to the common model. So the input common model changes and accordingly, one, uh, in one case you can expect that the transistor might be different into the saturation, in other case you can also use the transistor to move into the car. But you know that in order to ensure that uh, the, the transistor is operating as an amplifier, the idea is that you have to buy the transistor in the active region or linear region. Since I don't have any explicit biasing over there using some resistance and all, so that is taken care of by the I log. That, that part. Right. Okay. So obviously, since uh, this uh, differential signal is having uh, two such uh, component, one is the DC level, and then obviously the, the small signal component. So we'll analyze uh, the performance of this circuit uh, separately. First, we consider the performance of this signal, a uh, performance of this particular uh, amplifier under uh, DC condition. That uh, DC condition means what? That means uh, both of these two inputs, input one and input two. This is one input. This is one input. This is another input. Right? There are two inputs, and remember that both of them are riding on things. DC. So we we'll observe the performance when the DC is acting alone, and then when the small signal is acting. Alone. So when the DC is acting alone, so basically. Both of these two pairs, they are having the same drive, same same channel because they are having the same level. That means V in one and V in two, they are same, and that is equal to V in Vm input common model. Right? So for this transistor Q1 and Q2, their base are held at the same same voltage, and their emitters are also having the same voltage because they are they are their emitters are connected together. Bases are also connected together. So base emitter drive is fixed. Right? And I am assuming initially I have told you. That both of so this Q1 and Q2 they are basically the rate of one another. So they are having the same cutting voltage, same beta, everything being the same. Q1 and Q2 being the same, just mirror image. So therefore, what do you expect? Since the base emitter voltage is same, so we must be having the same current going through Q1 and Q2, right? So the collector kind of Q1 that is IC1 and collector kind of Q2 that is IC2, they must be same, right? And they are summation. They are, uh, I mean, IC1 plus IC2 is nothing but your I, I, right? So what about the individual current? I, I e by two through Q1, I e by two through Q. When only DC signal is applied, right? And another symmetry was there. The symmetry uh, lies in the form of this uh, collector X. I have told you that. If this is RC, this is also RC. It is not that it is RC1, this is RC2. It is not like that. Both of them are RC. This is RC, this is also RC. Uh, same resistance, right? Then what about your uh, this voltage, this Vx? What about that voltage? Vcc minus RCC by E by What about Py? Vcc minus RCC by E by Same current, 
then drop at the resonance, right? Now, individually, the Vx and Vy, that voltage, you have some non zero voltage. VCC minus RCC into IE by some non zero voltage at point X and at point Y. But if you just take the difference between these two, Vx minus Vy, that is zero. Difference is zero. So that's why it is called a differential angle. That means if you amplify only the difference, if there is any difference present in the two signals, the pair of signals, then only this will be reflected at the output. Now, whenever both of these two pairs they are having the same DC level, so input 1 and input 2, they are having the same value. Huh? So, what is the difference? The difference is 0. The difference is 0. So, therefore, the output voltage, which is nothing but Vx minus Vy, that is equal to 0. So, if you have some change in the DC level, suppose you have some change in the DC level, suppose the input common level increases or decreases simultaneously, either the NCM increases or the NCM drops. Then also, as long as these two transistors are the same, as long as these two resistors are the same, you have the output voltage resulting from this differential amplifier equal to zero. So this individual voltage might be different over here. But if you take the difference, so this difference, this value minus this value, dx minus dy will be always equal to zero. So if we have some change in the input power mode level, either positive change or negative change, that change is not reflected. So that's why it is not a differential angle. So no, here the input is not differential. Input is, is, is uh, a fixed DC. I have not applied any. I have not applied any small signal value. So that's why this is the circuit. So this input, these two inputs are connected together directly. Right. So DC level, same value. This input, I have applied the DC input over there. Fixed DC. This is this, uh, some voltage at 12 volt or 10 volt supply. Suppose this is 3 volt for example or 4 volt. So suppose it is 4 volt, this is 12 volt. Now if it is 4 volt then also Vx minus V equal to 0. If it is 5 volt then also 0, 6 volt then also 0. This individual value might be different but the difference is equal to 0. That means this differential amplifier is sensitive to the differential input, not the common mode input. So when these two bases are tied together, that means it's a common mode input. Same thing. So, the circuit is not at all responsible. Right. And this circuit is obtained, or, or the response of the circuit is obtained from the difference between the two outputs, Vx minus Vy. Not, not from, not, neither from Vx, nor from Vy alone. Okay. Is it clear? Up to this point? Okay. So, Now suppose I incorporate some asymmetry in the circuit itself. What is the asymmetry? Asymmetry now, the asymmetry lies in the resistance level, so RC1 and RC2. As of now, we have told that the this left hand side and the right hand side, these two sides, they are the replica. Left hand side is the replica of the right hand side and vice versa. Now, and suppose let's assume that this Q1 and Q2 they are they are identical, right? Now suppose these two uh, uh, resistors are not the same. We have RC1 one, one side, RC2 other side. Right. Then what happens? Same circuit, same IE is going. Now when these two bases are tied together, these two bases are tied together, and I'm assuming that so uh, the, 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 the corresponding base one and base two they are having the same voltage, emitters are tied together, point P. So therefore, what do you expect? The the base emitter drive being the same for Q1 and Q2, same drive, they are having. And if the if these two uh, transistors, uh, if they have the if they share the same properties, then you have the same current. Total current is IE, same current here. I, so IC1 is equal to IC2 is equal to IE by 2, like before. But what about Vx now? Vx is equal to VCC minus RC1 times IE by 2. What about VCY? VCC minus RC2 times IE by 2. So therefore, now if you take the difference, this is no longer 0. This is RC2 minus RC1 times IE by 2. So, if you incorporate the current system, but the output voltage is not equal to, I mean the output voltage is not equal to zero. So, even if you, now, even if you have the same transistors Q1 and Q2, but if the transistor, if, if the corresponding uh, this uh, collector resistors, if they are different, 
Then obviously, you have some, even if your input output level is being the same. V1 is equal to VNCM, V2 is equal to VNCM. That means V1 minus V2 is equal to 0. The difference is equal to 0. Co output signal. But since this RC1 and RC2, they are not the same. So that's why, uh, because of this asymmetry, so this is not a symmetric circuit. The previous circuit was symmetric circuit. This circuit is not. So because of this asymmetry, what I find that the output signal is not equal to 0. That means the output is, now this time the output is also sensitive. Output is sensitive to the input variation. And in, there is no variation in input. Input is a DC level, constant level, DC, DC, DC level. So therefore, some asymmetry is there and I cannot regard that okay, this circuit is a perfect differential and different circuit. Okay. Now, now what I do? Now, as of now we have assumed that uh, V not into this, then, right? Now I am now I am allowing the V one and V two to be unequal. That means now I am incorporating that differential signal into the into the, into the particular con context. The same I uh, uh, right. So suppose uh, suppose this is my so let me just draw it. So this is the DC level. So this was the DC level, and over and above this DC level, you have this plug here. Right? So at this particular point, now if I mark this point, if I mark this point, at this point, what do you find? At this point, you find that V1, if I call it, this is 1, and this is 2. At this particular point, over here, what I find? That the input voltage at, that the, at the base of V1 is greater than the input voltage at the base of V2. But now, if, but if the variation is small, if this variation is small, then I can assume that both of these two transistors will still be there in that or linearly, so that both of them will amplify the signal. Right. But suppose I am allowing the signal to vary from minus infinity to plus. That means when the suppose they are writing on a DC level, suppose the DC value is equal to let me call V in CM is equal to say for example, this is equal to say 5 volt. Right. And suppose uh, I am just uh, neglecting the uh, small signal motion and let's assume that these fluctuations, this, this uh, if I call it like, uh, suppose, if I call it like V dash, that fluctuation, suppose V dash is equal to say 4.5, 44. That means I am just violating the small signal motion. To understand what is meant by a small signal, we discussed this one. Huh? In the, the previous image. So the variation should be small with respect to that uh, your uh, thermal voltage. Uh, here the variation is large. It's riding on 5 volt and you have 4.5 volt transfer signal. So under this condition, what do you find? When V1 is greater than V2, the one transistor will be driven to saturation. And the other transistor will be driven to cut. When V0 is greater than V2, Q1 is having higher base drive as compared to Q2. So therefore, Q1 will be driven into saturation and Q2 will be driven into cut. Similarly, if V0 is less than V2, Q2 will be driven into saturation and Q1 will be driven into cut. Neither of these two conditions are desired. But still, we are interested in finding out the behavior of the circuit when the input fluctuation is from minus infinity to plus infinity. When this V0 minus V2 is very small to very large. What can be very small? Minus infinity. What can be very large? Plus infinity. We have already observed the behavior of the circuit when this difference is equal to 0. That means that V0 minus V2 equal to 0. We have already observed the common one behavior. And now we are allowing this change. Previously the change was 0. Now I am allowing the change to vary from very small to very large. So therefore, 
when uh, q1 is uh, when v1 is uh, is greater than v2 or very very greater than v2 q1 will be given to saturation right saturation that means the entire current this entire current will flow through q1 so this kind is ie this ic1 ha that is ie that current and this current is equal to zero so what about this voltage then vcc minus rci what about this voltage simple vcc zero vcc so vcc minus rci here it is vcc only if you take the difference what is the difference minus rci so when v1 is much much greater than v2 that difference is equal to minus rci that is one extreme condition the other extreme condition is when v0 is much much less than v in that case this entire current will flow through this q2 right so this this uh, this current is equal to ie this current is equal to zero then what about this voltage when v0 is much much less than v2 this is vcc this voltage vcc minus rci now if you take the difference plus rci right so now if you observe this uh, this large signal we have it's not it's, it's not a uh, uh, So whenever I call it large signal, it's not a DC gate. Large signal means what? That means I'm allowing the signal to vary from very small to very large. Right? Two extreme conditions. So what I find, what I find is this one. Previous day I already observed this one. This one you have already observed. When V one minus V equal to zero, both of these two values they are equal to VCC minus. Rc into I by two. That you already observed last time. When V one is much much greater than V two, then what I find? V one is much much greater than V two. V one is much much greater than V two. Yes. So this I think uh, you cannot observe it because uh, the both of these two colors. Uh, Seem to be the same. One is red, other one is maroon, but seem to be the same anyway. Yes. So this is the fluctuation of V X. This is the fluctuation of V X, and this is the fluctuation of V Y. Right. Similarly, I can also check the the corresponding difference. The difference is not there. Anyway, I can also draw the difference over there. This is V one minus V two, for example, right? And this is your V X minus V Y. Okay. So when V one minus V two equal to zero, what was V X minus V Y? That is zero. Okay. When V one minus V two is much much greater than much much greater than zero. Then what was Vx minus Vy? Minus Rci. Minus Rci. So let me mark over here. This is minus Rci. Okay. And when V1 minus V2 is much much less than zero, the difference was plus Rci. So I can mark it over there. That is plus plus Rci. So I know only these three conditions. One condition when V one equal to V two, that means over here, over here, when V one is much much greater than V two, then over there, and when V one is much much less than V two, over here, right? And but I don't know the behavior in between. I don't know the behavior in between. So let me put it by dotted line. Very yet. Only I know. When V one equal to V two, the the uh, differential output is equal to zero. When V one is much much greater than V two, the differential output is minus R C I. When V one is much much less than V two, the differential output is plus R C I. Right. But if I consider the differential voltage equal to, I mean the differential voltage output is equal to minus R C I, that's a constant transistor. Similarly here, it's plus R C I constant. One transistor is already driven into the saturation, and the other transistor is cut off. So. The motion of amplification is completely lost. So, although I have observed this region, these three regions, this one, this one, and this one, but none of these three regions are of our interest. 
Our interest is where there is some fluctuation. Because this is nothing but the variation of the output differential voltage with respect to the input differential voltage. Right? So, how can you calculate the gear of the amplifier circuit? How to calculate the gear from the graph itself? From the graph, how can you calculate the gain? This is called as the this is called as a translated output voltage. Output voltage back to the input voltage. Transfer characters is now if you take the slope of the graph, del V X another del V out by del V in, that will give you the the gain. Del V out over del V in. So here this is del V out. This is V out basically. This is V in basically. So if you take the ratio d y d x, if you take the ratio differentiation, if you just perform the differentiation, then you will be getting the gain. But here, this is flat. What is the what is the tangent here? Zero. Here also this is zero. So I cannot consider what, this region, or I cannot consider this region. I have to consider this region where the slope is not zero. There only you can have some. Gain. Not here, not there. So in order to find out this performance in between, I have to perform some mathematical calculation. I need to know. How does it vary? How does it vary? Is it a straight line? Or does it follow parabolic uh, nature? Or some cosine spiral function? Sinusoidal function, function, tan function, exponential function? I don't have any idea. So, for that, I have to perform some mathematical calculation. Right? Over this region only. Okay. So, for a transistor, you know that IC, the current, current is given by IS to the power TB upon B. Minus 1 is just power of minus 1. IS is equal to exponential, it is exponential TB upon B. Right? So, from this, you can represent, from this, from this expression, you can represent this VBE as VT ln IC upon IS. I see upon I S take logarithm both sides. So V B is equal to V T. What is V T? Normal voltage K T upon Q. So 25 millivolt. K T V uh, T into L N I C upon I S. So for transistor Q1, I can write V B1 as V T L N I C1 by I S. For transistor uh, 2, Q2, I can write V B2 as V T L N I C2 by I S. Okay. What about the potential at this point? Point, if I call it point P, what is that voltage? This is nothing but this. What is this voltage? This voltage equal to this voltage minus this voltage. So V in one minus V one. So V in one minus V one. That is also equal to V in two minus V two. That is equal to V P. Right. So what we have got? V P one we have obtained. V P two we have obtained. So V P one minus V two is nothing but V in one minus V two. Right? It's not that P is held at the zero voltage. It's not that P is held at the zero voltage. But from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here, if you take the difference, the difference remaining the same. Because both of them, from both sides, from the left hand side, from the right hand side, they are accounting the same potential. They are accounting the same node, not P. So V1 minus V2 is given by V1 minus V2. And if you just plug in the values, this is nothing but VT ln IC1 upon IS. Minus V T L N I C two upon I S. Remember here, these two voltages are different. So that's why V P one, V P two, right? So V T L N I C one upon I C two. Clear? So you have two unknowns. You have two unknowns. What do you need to find out? You need to find out the I value, the current I C one, I C two. I C one, I C two. Given this V in one and V in two, you have to find out the I C value. Current, 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 current. I C one, I C two. You have got one. One equation you have got V in one minus V two is equal to this much V T L N I C one by I C two. This is one equation. In order to second equation, second equation is I C one plus I C two is equal to I. That is the second equation. The summation is equal to I. That guy, right? So now you have two equations. You have two unknowns. You can now represent from this expression if I, if V in one minus V two is equal to if V in one minus V in two is equal to V T L and I C one by I C two, then you can represent I C one as I E uh, from this expression. From this expression, you can represent I C one in terms of I C two. This is nothing but 
exponential d naught minus v two upon v t multiplied with i c. So what is i c one? This is v naught minus v two upon v t. Exponential of that multiplied with i c. Clear? So i c one is equal to i c two exponential d naught minus v two upon v t plus i c two is equal to i two equations. One equation is this one. This is the second equation. Three equations one. Right. So i c two is given by i e by one plus exponential d naught minus v two upon v t. That is the expression for i c. Correct. Right? You can also check if v not equal to v two. If v not equal to v two, <laughs> if the power two there is one, one plus one two i e by and many by. Right? If v one is much much greater than v. Uh, uh, if v one is much much greater than v. Shift the one. If v one is much much greater than v. That means this value is much much greater. Then unity, so that means this is almost equal to zero. The v one is much much greater than v two. Transistor q one will be divided into saturation, and q two will be divided into cutoff. Then no current. You can verify. So you got I C one. Similarly, you can also get I C two. I C two is nothing but I E upon one plus I two to the power v one. Uh, uh, so I C two I have already got I E upon one plus I two to the power v one minus v two by v t. And similarly, you can also get I C one as I e upon one plus exponential v into minus v one by v two. Here you have v one minus v two. Here you have v two minus v. You can verify, right? If we add them together, that will give you I e, right? You can also verify. Yeah, I have already told you this one. If I c one is equal to, yeah. If uh, if v one equal to v two, I v one equal to v two. This expression. Evolutes to one. Uh, zero. Uh, this this expression evolutes to one. This expression evolutes to one. So both I C one and I C two they are equal to I E by two, and V X equal to V Y is equal to V C C minus I E by two into R C. We have already seen when V one is much much greater than V two. What happens? I C one carries the entire current. I I I C two is equal to zero. V X is equal to V C C minus I E R C, and V Y is equal to V C. And when V one is much much less than V two. Transistor Q1 will be divided into cutoff. Q2 will be divided into saturation. It will carry the entire current. And V X is equal to V C C. V I is equal to V C C minus I E R C. So the expression that we have got for I C one and I C two that can be justified as very much from our quantitative discussion, right? Then we are in the process of calculating V X minus V Y because that is my ultimate output. V X minus V Y eventual output. So that differential output is equal to what is V X minus V Y? You know the expression for V X? Oh, sorry, yeah. What was V X? V X is equal to V C C minus I C one times R C, and V Y is equal to V C C minus I C two times R C. So therefore, V X minus V Y is nothing but I C two minus I C one times R C. V X minus V Y is equal to I C two minus I C one times R C. So I C two minus I C one times R C. So already have got the expression for I C two and I C one. Now if you just uh, substitute these values, one by one plus exponential this minus one by one plus exponential this, and ultimately you have got okay this I E R C can be taken outside, and then ultimately you have got this function. Tan hyperbolic. Can you remember tan hyperbolic? What are the tan hyperbolic x? Sin theta x plus sin theta x. Sin theta x plus sin theta minus sin theta. By sin theta x minus sin theta. Right. So ultimately, this is tan hyperbolic function. How does it look like? How does it look like tan hyperbolic function? Typically, it looks something like that. Tan hyperbolic function looks something like that. Yeah. Non-linear tan hyperbolic x. Tan hyperbolic x, right? So 
that is equal to class 1 when x is much much greater than unit. When x is much much greater than unit, when x is much much greater than unity, this is equal to class 1. Right? And when x is much much less than minus 1, then this standard harmonic is equal to minus 1. So it is bounded. Bounded between class 1 and minus 1. Right? Class 1 and minus 1. And tan hyperbolic 0 is equal to 0. Tan hyperbolic 0 is equal to 0. Right? What is the formula? Let me write it down. Then hyperbolic x is equal to this one, right? Sin hyperbolic x by cos hyperbolic x. So when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, we have 1 minus 1, 0 upon something, that is 0. When x is much much greater than unity, x is much much greater than unity, so to the power x can be regarded to be how much? 0. Right? So e to the power x by e to the power x, that is equal to 1. And when x is much much less than 1, then you have minus. Right? So that is the formula for the tan hyperbolic x. So this is equal to class 1 when x is much much greater than 1, this is equal to minus 1, and minus 1 x is much much less than 1, and tan hyperbolic 0 is equal to 0. And another point is that that is our important criteria over there is that tan hyperbolic x is can be approximate to be x when x is much much less than 1. When x is much much less than 1. Morning. Yeah. Right. So now with this understanding, with this understanding, now I can draw the differential output. How does it look like? We have minus sign there, minus RCI. So the product is, I mean, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this maximum value is, this one is RCI, this is minus RCI, and this is the slope. Right. Previously we have identified this one, no? RCI, minus RCI, and we were uncertain about this part, and that's why I have to use some dotted line over there. Right. Now, now we have established, okay, now this is this function, basically the tan hyperbolic. RCI, minus RCI, at 0, it is 0, and then in between you have a tan hyperbolic function. And it looks something like that. This is nothing but our transfer characteristics, output versus input, right? Now, as I already told you, the slope of this transfer characteristics will give you the gain of this right? And I can approximate this tan hyperbolic x equal to x when x is much much less than infinity. What is x here? What is x here? What is x? What is the argument? Or tan hyperbolic function? Yes, the argument is v1 minus v2 upon v. That is the argument. v1 minus v2 upon v. When this is much much less than 1 means what? v1 minus v2 much much less than 2 to v. That means individually, individually, both of them, both of these two signals, they possess the characteristics of a small signal. Can you remember what is the during the uh, discussion in the last evening, during the discussion of the small signal amplifier, how can I regard a signal to a small signal? When the V in or rather V in input signal, this fluctuation is much much less than the term of voltage between you. Then only I can point out that a small signal. So both of them, both V in 1 and V in 2, they are small signal. That means V in 1 much much less than V in V in 2 much much less than V in Right? And since V0 and V2, their variation is equal to opposite, so V0 minus V2 should be much much less than 2V. 
Now, if this condition holds good, then I can say that I can already invite that concept, which has already been discussed in the in the last evening. That means it's a small signal when v1 minus v2 is much much less than 2. Why is the Right? Then only the notion of small signal is valid, and then only I can apply the uh, the uh, this uh, notion of amplitude. Right? Now if Stand hyperbolic x. If this x is much much less than infinity, I can regard stand hyperbolic to be x. What is that x? So now I can write when when this variation is small with respect to unity. If this variation is small, what the, what they are only, then how can I write what is that value? Vx minus Vy is minus RCI times this one. Minus RCI times V1 minus V2 upon 2 bt. So Vx minus Vy. Is approximately equal to minus RCI times V1 minus V2 by 2 Vt. So, what is the gain? If you take the ratio Vx minus Vy upon V1 minus V2, what is that value? This is nothing but minus RCI by 2 Vt. Is it a known parameter? Have you ever observed this parameter? We could not in this form, but some other form too. Minus RCI by 2 Vt. Answer is there in the next slide. Minus RCI by 2. That is the gain that you have obtained over there. Is it a known parameter? Does it ring any bell in, in your mind? What is the gain you are familiar with? Small signal amplifier, common emitter, one, one register there. What is the gain? Minus GM. Minus So we have minus RC. So for you not minus RC, you have some GM now. Some GM. It is GM. But you can use GM. I by 2 bit in the GM. I see I bit, right? This IE by 2 bit in the GM. Yes, yes. Because what is your IC? I by two. What is your IC? I by two is here and here. Right. So I by two is here IC. This by BT is here and here. This multiplied by minus. Nothing new. Nothing new. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we have. Uh, Derive the expression of the gain from the large signal analysis. Right. We have allowed the signal to vary from minus 100 to plus infinity. Minus the minus minus What is that gain? This is uh, IC by BT. And what is IC? IC by BT. IC by BT. IC by So we have uh, calculated the gain from a different perspective. From which perspective? We have allowed the input signal to vary from minus to plus infinity. And then we have identified a portion, a region, where the small signal is valid. This region, the small signal is valid over this region, where this value is much much less than unity. Over this region only, I can apply this particular approximation. Otherwise, remember, otherwise the circuit is not a linear. If the tan hyperbolic is not a linear function, it's not a linear function. But over that region, when this v1 minus v2 is much much less than 2 bt, over that region only. The circuit is a linear, and accordingly, the gain is a constant. Now, uh, let us uh, calculate uh, the gain from another perspective. What is that perspective now from the small signal perspective? From the small signal perspective. So, now I understand that both of these two inputs they are having the same DC level, and their fluctuation over and above the DC level is small. How much small? At max. At max speed, okay. Right? So I know that under DC condition, under DC condition, V0 equal to V into is equal to V in CM. Under DC condition, and then whenever I'm allowing whenever I'm allowing the input to vary differentially, so I can call V0 is equal to V in CM plus delta V. And V into is equal to V in CM minus delta V. It's not that always sinusoidal, it might be some uh, rectangular variation also. Plus delta V minus. 
also important of the discussion. That is the only thing that you have to ensure. So V naught is equal to V in CM plus delta V, V in is equal to V in CM minus delta V. Right? That means I am allowing and remember this delta V is small with respect to V. So that the circuit remains in the linear in the Okay. So then what is your Px? Vcc minus IC1 times RC. This is small IC1. Remember, this is small IC1. It's a small signal. Previously, we have considered in this particular slide over there, we have considered the large signal radius. <laughs> this is also differential pair. But here, so here the variation was from minus infinity to plus infinity. Right. Now, I know that over this region only, where this variation is only mod, less than mod 1, I mean, this mod of V1 minus V2 is within unity, then this tan hyperbolic nature, this nonlinear nature can be approximated to a linear one. Now, here in this particular slide, now I am restricting my observations over that region only, where V1 minus V2 is much, much less than V2. That's, that means a small signal of V1. I know how does it behave from minus to plus infinity, and I know my region of operation, region of ingress rather, and then I am restricting uh, uh, my uh, discussion within that region and I am saying that this delta V should be much much less than V. Then only your uh, small signal motion is valid. So what is this Vx, small Vx, that means the small signal, small V capital X, can you remember what is that called? Small V capital X, total instantaneous. As far as the notation is concerned, small small and subscript we have a capital, so total instantaneous. What is that? This voltage Vcc minus IC small IC small I capital C1 RC and Vcc minus small I capital C2 RC. Right? You cannot make the difference between C, C capital C small. Anyway, so what is Vx minus Vy? Okay. So what is Vx minus Vy minus RC into IC2 IC1 uh, IC1 minus IC, IC2? IC1 minus IC2? And what is that IC1 minus IC2? IC1 minus IC2. What is that? IC1 minus IC2. What is that? What is that? This is basically a tan hyperbolic function, right? This is tan hyperbolic function, but but if this delta v is small, if this delta v is small, then I can regard this as simply I by I into delta V by delta Vt. So I can write it like 2 delta V by 2 delta Vt. So therefore, your IC1 minus IC2, this IC1 minus IC2 is equal to I into delta V by delta Vt. Right? And IC1 plus IC2 already know that the total band should be equal to IE. So IC1 plus IC2 is equal to IE. IC1 plus IC2 is equal to IE. And IC1 minus IC2 is equal to I into delta V by delta Vt. So therefore, once again you have two equations, IC1 plus IC2 is equal to IE and IC1 minus IC2 is equal to IE into delta V by delta V. So from these two equations you can find out this total instantaneous current in this particular form. IE by 2 into 1 plus delta V by delta Vt and IE by 2, 1 minus delta V by delta V. Remember it's a total instantaneous current. So therefore when delta V is equal to 0, this is nothing but IE upon Q, IE upon Q. This is a total instantaneous current. Right. So this small IC1, small IC1, I can regard this small IC1, small i, this capital C1. Okay. This is equal to this one plus small. This is total. Total instantaneous is the DC part plus the small signal part. Now can you identify the small signal part here? DC part you know, IE by 2. So what is the small signal of this small IC1? What is that? Or I can call it like delta IC1. Delta IC1, I can also regard this as delta IC1. What is that? IE by 2 into delta V by Vt. IE by 2 into delta V by Vt. Now, this thing, IE by 2 by V. What is that? Let me see. Transcript. Collector current, DC collector current, 
upon the thermal voltage that is gf gf multiplied with delta v that is something you, you should expect no what is collector current yeah. what is collector current input current multiplied with transfer current and you get the collector current that is gm here that is gm v by this small thing called gm v by same thing so okay let it be gm1 so for transfer current gm1 and delta v is what delta v is nothing but your delta v to delta v that means what delta v over here over here this delta v is basically the delta v in this delta v is basically the delta v in and from the transistor perspective that delta v should be delta v b e From the transfer perspective, this delta V, whenever I write KI V is equal to GM M V E. Not the input change, but the base emitter change. Right? So therefore, what I get over here, this is equal to GM1 times delta V B. GM1 times delta V B. And from the expression what I am getting, that is nothing but GM1 times delta V. So in order to ensure that there is a consistency between these two expression so this delta v and delta v must be same that means if i allow some change to take place at the input over there that change must be reflected between the base emitters keeping this point p at a constant voltage take some time to digest this concept this delta v is the Input change that I am allowing from the outside, the reflection signal that I am allowing from the outside, that input change, right? And I know that, but transistor doesn't know, doesn't have any idea. What transistor feels if I have some base emitter change, then the collector current change, which was identified as base emitter change, multiplied with the gm, gm if I the gm dv, that is the collector current change. What is that? We have observed that delta is one is equal to this gm one or gm multiplied with Delta V, but I know that it should be GM times delta V B E. You know, to ensure that these equations are same, this equation and this equation, what I am getting, this delta V must be equal to delta V B. What is delta V B? That change. Because of this change, what is the change over there? I find that this change and the change over there being the same, keeping the voltage at the point P at constant. So if I have some change over there, so for example, suppose your input power mode level B and C M. Suppose this is held at, say this is held at 3 volt. Okay. And suppose your delta V is equal to say, uh, let it be 500 millivolt, 0.5 volt. Right? 0.5 volt. So therefore, whenever you have some plus delta V plus uh, 0.5 volt over there, so initially your input B in 1 was at 3 volt, input 1, uh, B in 1 is uh, having a value equal to 3.5 right so you have a plus plus 0.5 volt change over there so that plus 0.5 volt change is completely reflected by the change in vbe1 there suppose this level was 0.7 volt and then you have a corresponding change over there this level 0.7 plus 0.5 keeping this voltage constant keeping this voltage constant if i have some change over there delta v so once again this vbe1 also experiences the same change. So, so the change in V B is equal to change in change in, uh, change in VB and change in V1 is the same. It's the same. It's the same. So therefore, this change in the input voltage delta V is completely absorbed by the change in the basic voltage, keeping the voltage at point P constant. Right. Now, if the voltage at point P is held at a constant value. So, does it does it ring another bell in your mind? Uh, no, no, no. If the voltage at point, what, what is our observation? Our observation is that if there is a certain change in the V plus delta V, if there is a certain change in the uh, V in the plus delta V, that change is completely absorbed by VB1. If I have 0.5 volt change, this 0.5 volt change is absorbed by V1. VB1. 
keeping the voltage point be constant. So P is gate that is fixed point. Irrespective of the change over there. Irrespective of the change over there, this P is gate that is constant. Point. Right? So for the analysis, what, what I can do now? If the P is gate that is constant potential, fixed potential, the small single point, what I can do? Constant work, constant work voltage. Do this, if you want to constant voltage in a circuit, and if you want to what? In part from where is the MCQ examination? Constant voltage is equivalent to what? Why do I call it constant voltage? Means what? Huh? Ah, DC means what? The small thing amount means what? AC ground. AC ground. AC ground. Constant voltage means AC ground. So apart from this VCC, this point P is also related to it. Right, because P is related to it. So, had this been the case, so now I can incorporate another concept which is known as the half circuit concept. What is called half circuit? So this is held at a constant voltage. This is held at a constant voltage, this voltage. This is held at a constant voltage. Yes. So therefore, this is held at constant voltage. So in the small signal model, this is nothing but right. So now we have a combined circuit. We have a combined circuit. Now you can observe these two circuits separately, and that is known as a half circuit. So now yes. So now we apply. Uh, you draw the small signal model for this particular transistor. Pi model, base one, emitter one, collector one. Base one to emitter one, you have R pi one. Corrector on emitter on, you have GM on V pi one, and C on corrector on to emitter on, you have RC. Right? Basically, RC is connected between collector one and AC ground, and this emitter one is held at point P that is equal to AC ground. So therefore, I can connect over here. Also. Otherwise, this is connected to this RC is connected between. Sir, you can You can always apply by. Doesn't matter whether the emitter is connected to ground or not. Yeah. Right? So this is V pi 1 and over here you have applied this input plus delta V change. Okay. That is the left hand side. Right hand side, what you have? Base 2, emitter 2, you have R pi 2. Right? R pi 2, collector 2, emitter 2, you have GM to V pi 2. And collector 2 to ground, AC ground, you have RC. Since this emitter 2 is connected to point P, which is at AC ground, therefore I can directly connect this RC2 or another RC from Y2 from this particular terminal C2 to AC ground or C2 to E2. Remember, collector 1 is your point X and collector 2 is your point X and Y, right? And over here, when you have positive excursion over there, you have negative excursion, equal and opposite excursion, right? So very simple, what is Vx upon V in 1, you know, Vx upon V in 1 is nothing but minus J1 times RC and what is Vi upon V in 2, minus J2 by RC, right, that's a half circuit, so I have broken the circuit, its entire circuit into two different parts and assume, assuming that both of these two parts behave identically, right. Now with, if I assume that once again Q1 and Q2, they are the same transistors, same parameters, then GM1 must be equal to GM2. Then what is your Vx minus Vy? Vx is equal to minus GM1 times RC. Vy equal to Vx, uh, Vx by V1 is equal to minus GM1 times RC. And Vy upon V2 is equal to minus GM2 by RC. Right? Now with GM1 is equal to GM2, I can write Vx minus Vy is equal to minus GM RC times V1 minus V2. So therefore, you could take the differential gain. And what is that gain? Vx minus Vy upon V1 minus V2 is given by minus V1. You have got minus GM RC and that is nothing but minus IE by 2 PP. 
How to calculate CM? So minus I by 2 bt. Right? That is the gain. And already you have got this gain. We already have got this gain from here. Right? Minus RC I by 2. Same thing. Right? From the last thing analysis, while uh, restricting our uh, region of operations within a particular range where mod b1 minus b2 is less than 1, much much less than 1, uh, rather much much less than b2, uh, twice bt. Mod of b1 minus b2 much much less than twice bt. Then we have obtained the gain to be the slope of this particular graph. That is equal to minus rc i by 2 bt. So from the large signal analysis, with the condition that uh, both of these two signals, they uh, satisfy the notion of small signal, then we have got the gain to be minus RC i by 2 bt. And we have also obtained the same expression of gain using the small signal analysis and uh, using the half cycle. Right. So, since we have used some very simplest, simplistic model, so that's why uh, we have used this one. Otherwise, you can also have some, I mean, uh, this circuit, uh, this individual circuit can be a little bit complicated. I mean, uh, this amplifier. Really this. Okay, this is the scope of the transfer characteristics car. You have to only make it.